Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman with update number two on the WD MyCloud. That's that network attached storage device that has a lot of people interested. I'm getting a lot of questions about it. Uh, one of the questions came from a YouTube commenter where they have ribs 55. And if he knows where those ribs are, please let me know. I'm always in the mood for some uh, good barbecue. Any event, he was looking for a way to transfer files to the drive without having to go over the network. So we did a benchmark in our last update uh, with the network write speeds, but uh, there is a way actually to connect to the drive via its USB port. Now you can't hook it up to your computer, but you can take an external drive and just plug it in. So uh, you'll see over here in my data center, if you call it that, I have a, one of the solid state disks I use to record this show uh, hooked up to the drive's USB port. And there's a couple of ways to transfer files without using the network. The first way uh, is to use the app, which is the desktop app. And I suppose you could do this on uh, the other one also, the one that, um, uh, the one that you use on the uh, mobile devices. But uh, basically all you, all you need to do is just uh, select the file, uh, go to copy, and then just paste it into uh, the folder that you want to put it into. So I'll just stick it into my public folder here, just paste it, uh, and it'll go over really quickly because it's a pretty small file that we just transferred, uh, and there it is, 8.3 megabytes in a, in a flash. So it's hard to benchmark this because I don't have a way of timing exactly when the file transfer ends. It doesn't give you in, in the app, it doesn't give you any kind of uh, little bar to indicate how long it's taking for the file to transfer. Uh, but there's another way, and let me show you how to set this up, and then we're going to uh, pop in there and get it going. And I'm doing, I've, I haven't done this yet, so you're gonna be uh, stepping along with me as we do it. So uh, let's, let's get back to our computer screen here, and uh, this is the control panel that you uh, get with the device, and this is the web-based one. And in the settings, there is a couple of things that are hidden from view, and that is over in the network. So when you first go into settings, you'll be into general. What you want to do is go to network, and you'll notice an option here for SSH, and that stands for Secure Shell. Um, as it turns out, there is a full-blown Linux installation on the drive. It is running a little embedded Linux. It has about uh, 512 megs of RAM. Uh, and what you do when you enable this thing here is it'll give you uh, root access to the hard drive. And they warn you that when you do that, uh, you are risking your warranty. Because when you have root access to a Linux machine, you can wipe it out uh, and, and wreak all sorts of havoc on there. So if you don't really know Linux too well, my suggestion would be to get uh, play around a little bit with it and uh, you know somewhere else on <laughs> something you can't you're not worried about breaking uh, then come back and use it i'm i'm kind of a linux novice but i know enough to be dangerous so what we're going to do is pop into the drive through the mac terminal running ssh on our mac and it's going to you're going to log into root at your address there and it's going to ask for a password just going to type that in uh, and now we are in and they're telling us to be really careful here because now we have root access to uh, this little drive here. So uh, we can just do a directory search. Where it dumps you is kind of into the root user file, so you don't really have anything right when you get in. Uh, but you can run a little command here and just see what's running on the device. So uh, you'll see we have about uh, 500 megs of RAM total. Uh, and it's got a web server running on here, Apache, and a few other things. It's, uh, it's a pretty neat little embedded device here. So uh, what we're going to do is just go out to the root directory here, and you can see uh, all of our shares here. And I think the files we want are in data volume. Uh, shares, yep, so go to shares. And as you can see here, we have everything that we could see on the web app uh, in the directory structure here. So what I'm going to do, though, is pop over to video SSD two and i'm going to do a directory there all right so i've got a two gigabyte file on the ssd drive and it's called uh, capture 003.mov i'm going to pull up a little timer here and what we're going to do is copy that file uh, from the ssd drive to uh, the public share on the drive and i've got a timer here i'm going to hit at the same time we're going to see how long it takes uh, to copy that two gigabyte file so here we go <laughs> Okay, so it looks like it took uh, just under a minute to copy two gigabytes, which isn't too bad, and that's uh, completely off the network. So you're able to uh, do that. I think if you were to do it through the app, it would probably be about the same amount of time, and also will be a little bit safer because you're not risking blowing up your entire hard drive uh, in the course of, of, uh, of, of doing some quicker file transfers because root access 
uh, can be a very dangerous thing. Now, I was not able to log into the drive with the, uh, any other user that I set up in it through the web interface. So even though those users are showing up within my Linux installation, for whatever reason, I don't have shell access with those. And I suppose you could uh, go in and use some more uh, Linux commands to uh, set up a whole bunch of users that don't have root access so you can more safely move files around on the drive. But uh, Western Digital says you will void your warranty the more that you muck around in there. So I would be very, very careful uh, using that uh, terminal option, but you do have it and it does work and it can uh, be a great way to very quickly move your files over uh, when you're first setting the drive up. So I hope that answers some of your questions. We'll do another follow up in a few days uh, with a digital camera plugging into it also to see how that works. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.